I hate to interrupt this photo opportunity, Mr. President, but I have a date with my husband. Well, am I glad to see you? I'm so hungry, I feel faint. If any of these photos show up in the tabloids, you're out of business, fella. How'd the test go? Uh, well, nobody aced it, but overall, I would say it was fair. I mean the cholesterol test. Oh, that test. That bad, huh? I didn't say it was bad. Well, spit out the number, Chance. Can we talk about this over lunch? Is it over 200? Uh, yeah. Over 250? Hey, what'd you do, bowl a perfect game? May I have two chili dogs, please, with everything on them? What do you want, babe? You're not ordering any hot dogs until you tell me your cholesterol count. Okay, it's 272. Now, can I have the chili dogs? <laughs> no way. What do you mean? Hey, I don't want a triple bypass on my conscience, pal. Look, take the lady's advice. I don't believe this. You're not going to give me two chili dogs? Hey, we are just looking out for your welfare. Look at this guy. He's the size of a minivan. He's telling me how to eat. Honey, let's go get you some carrots and sprouts for lunch. I don't want sprouts. I want a chili dog. I want meat. I want all beef wieners, preferably kosher. Just spinning round in your mind. <laughs> Curiosity, find out what you're missing. Something's going down all the time. Yeah. Where well, you lead, don't you know that I will follow? We leave no stone unturned. Stop and look and listen You never know what you might find Good morning, D.C. All you movers and shakers better get moving and shaking. If you're not on the Beltway, you're already late. Honey, have you seen the make for this shoe? I didn't know they made it. Which tie? This one. Ah. Honey, if I don't find this other shoe, I'm gonna have to change my whole outfit. You ever thought of keeping your shoes in pairs? Honey, help me, please. Not in there, I don't. That's no man's land. Ah, watch it. Cosgrove and Wales. Isn't that strictly a men's store? Oh, you weren't supposed to see that till after I hemmed it. You bought me a new suit? Yeah. Uh-oh, Fibonacci. How much you pay for this? you can say for your manners this is a gift yeah, we're still making payments on the last gift you gave me sweetheart i do not need a fancy italian suit oh sure you do we're going dancing saturday night and i want you to be drop dead gorgeous sorry honey, that's the night of the big fight i'm not going to hang around with a bunch of high society stiffs dancing but honey that's the night of my sorority's reunion dance you have to be there i've been waiting all year for this fight i'm not going dancing there gonna be other fights yeah like right now if you don't drop the subject it's so bad that Mickey wants to show off her Chancy poo. We'll start with the baby talk. It's not going to work. Oh, Chancy really loved Mickey. He would know how important this is to him. Do not try to manipulate an expert on human behavior. It's a losing proposition. I hate dancing. Will you just do it for me, please, honey bun? I hate parties. I'm not going. Mickey, don't start with the earlobe. Don't you know what that does to me? Mickey, stop it. Mickey, Mickey, I'll tape the fight. Works every time. The shoe! Studying actual unsolved murder cases hopefully will give you some idea of what the police are up against. So, what is the goal of a criminal investigation? Anybody? Jason. To collect information that will lead to the identification, arrest, and conviction of the perpetrator. Okay, that's what the textbook says. What do you say? To get to the truth. Ah, whose truth? His truth, her truth, my truth? There's only one truth. Is that so? No ifs, no maybes, no shades of gray. Well, you see, in the wide world of criminology, the truth has, let's say, multi-layers. And it is the job of the trained investigator to peel back those layers until he reaches the core. Ah, Lieutenant, glad you could make it. Class, this is Police Lieutenant Akers, 3rd District Homicide. I'm sorry I'm late. I just wish business wasn't so good. 
that. The lieutenant was the uh, source of the actual case files you've been analyzing. And he's been kind enough to come here today to listen to your reports and to hopefully answer any questions you may have. Okay, where do we start? Let's take Paul's group. Our group studied the case of John Kirby, a stockbroker who was stabbed to death when he returned home on a hot August night four years ago. Now, what we found was a perfunctory search for Kirby's killer, which concluded that he was the victim of a burglar whose crime he interrupted. A conclusion I'm convinced was hasty and wrong. According to the testimony of his mistress, Carolyn Sutton, she and Kirby returned to his home in a rented limousine that night to get a key to his country cabin. Ms. Sutton claimed that she waited several minutes for Kirby to return with the key, then became impatient and went looking for it. What she found when she entered the house was evidence of a break-in, and Kirby sprawled on a living room floor with an ice pick, keeping his tie in place. Did anybody ever get arrested? Nope. The only person police could find with a real motive to kill Kirby was the wife he was cheating on, but she was out of town at the time and couldn't be tied to the crime in any way. What makes you so sure that the police were wrong and that it wasn't just a murder in the course of a random burglary? Actually, it was something that I found in the metro section of yesterday's paper. Let me read it to you. A uh, district parole board announced that Roland Marcus, formerly an investment VP at Jasper Kimbrough, will be released from Wrightwood Federal Prison this week. Marcus, who has served two years of his four-year sentence, was convicted on six counts of insider trading and securities fraud. Excuse me, did I miss something? What's this Marcus guy got to do with the Kirby murder? I'm afraid you did miss something, Lieutenant. You see, in the files that we studied, there was a transcription of the victim's appointment book with the following notation on June 27th, just five weeks before the murder. Roland M., 1631K, lunch. And so you're suggesting that this Roland M. is Roland Marcus? The branch of Jasper Kimbrough where he worked was at 1631 K Street. All well and good, but I don't see the connection you're making. You still don't see it? What if Marcus and Kirby were plotting the same scam that got Marcus convicted? Maybe he got greedy and killed Kirby over the split. I don't know. Unfortunately, it's what you know that counts. Marcus is only going to be in prison another couple of days. Once he's in the clear, it may be too late. Hey, whoa, if you're suggesting we do not do adequate follow-up on these investigations, I have to take exception to that. My people work their butts off. <clears throat> no offense. Uh... Now, where there's a reasonable suspicion, we move on it. That means you'll talk to Marcus? Who is this guy? A real hot shot, that kid. Yeah, Paul is one of my best students, borders on genius. The only problem is, well, he's so full of himself, he's his own worst enemy. He's always swimming upstream. And towering genius disdains a beaten path. Six regions heretofore unexplored. Not fair, Professor. <laughs> What's a homicide cop doing quoting Abraham Lincoln? Uh, the last politician who didn't let me down. You know, Chance, writing the Kirby murder off to a burglar never did sit right with me. So you think the kid may be right? There's something to that Marcus connection? I seriously doubt that. Well, apparently they did meet. Hey, I got bodies stacked at the coroner's office that are still warm, and you want me to follow up an ice-cold lead on a four-year-old murder? I knew you'd understand. I'm not doing this for Mr. Genius, you know. I'm doing it for you. You got that? Sure. Say hi to your mom for me. Oh, by the way, she claims you still owe her 20 bucks from the last time she beat you at pool. That was supposed to be a friendly game. Ma? Hugo, don't forget we pick up the Spanish envoy at 10. Hi, sweetie. Hey, Professor. How's life treating you? Oh, I can't complain. Actually, I can, but it won't do any good. Who do you like in the fight, Saturday? Kind of a sore spot with me, Hugo. You are gonna watch it, aren't you? I'm going dancing. <laughs> you're kidding, right? I wish I were. The fight of the year, and you're going dancing? Where did I go wrong, Hugo? You should have hung a left at the altar. Right. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Paul Walters, field investigator for the IRS. IRS? Yeah, uh, don't worry, it's not about you. Uh, they told me up front that you used to be Rowan Marcus's secretary. Aren't you a little young for the job? Intern program. Look, I told the authorities everything about Mr. Marcus when he was under indictment. No, 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 you don't understand. This is about a business lunch that he deducted two years before he went to jail. 
The man makes God knows how much in insider trading, and you're worried about a business lunch? Taxpayer's money. It's the little things that add up. Now, the lunch in question was with a John Kirby. Uh, excuse me, young man. Would you be good enough to step into my office for a minute? Why don't you save me the time and yourself any further embarrassment and tell me the truth about why you're here? Well, actually, it's for a class assignment in college. <laughs> I said the truth. That is the truth. You see, I'm analyzing the police investigation into the murder of John Kirby from a criminology class at Georgetown. Who's this Kirby? He was a stockbroker at Tanner and Associates. Now, I know that he met with Marcus at least once in the period before his death. Mr. Marcus has already done this company untold damage from his private profiteering. We had our name dragged through the mud for three months during the trial. If you think I'm going to let that kind of negative publicity get rekindled so that you can score an A on some term paper, you must be out of your mind. Now, go ahead, get the hell out of here before I call the police and have you charged with impersonating a federal official. You're not gonna like this, but after all these years, somebody's decided to poke into the Kirby murder. Add one quarter cup of cooking sherry. How do you know that was a quarter of a cup? You ever see Julia Child measure anything? Either you got to touch or you don't. All right, grind one teaspoon of dried marjoram between your palms. We got 140 gadgets running here, and I've got to grind spices in my palms. You want it to taste authentic, don't you? I finally get a home-cooked meal, and I got to do the cooking. Sure sounds like that kid was a little out of line with the lieutenant. Oh, Stan was able to handle it. I don't know anything about that stockbroker who was murdered, but I do know about the Marcus trial. I remember that. When they sentenced that guy, he looked like he was going off on a Mediterranean holiday, not to a federal prison. <laughs> you ever been down to Wrightwood? I mean, it's not a tropical vacation, but we're not talking busting rocks, either. Yeah. Oh, honey, don't put anything down the disposal. It's on the fritz. Well, did you call? What's his name? Our plumber. Yeah, he's in Hawaii for three weeks. Hawaii? I'll tell you something about the prices he charges, doesn't it? You know, as I remember, they never did find all the money that Marcus swindled. Maybe it's just waiting for him to get out. You know, maybe I could fix the disposal. When you tried to fix the washer, you broke the dryer. Why don't you find somebody who does that for a living? I can't live with last week's linguine for three weeks. Well, why don't you go down to your office and pick up one of those paper shredders? You know, maybe the kid was right. And Marcus really did kill Kirby. And the parole board is unknowingly about to put a killer back on the street. You won't trust an amateur to fix a garbage disposal, and you're perfectly happy to take the word of some young whiz kid about a murder investigation? You've either got the touch or you don't. Well, you certainly have the touch, lady. Ooh. Mm. stuff you're putting on your face. Oh, the only thing standing between me and the ravages of time. Are you kidding? You don't need all of this stuff. Sure I do. Come on. We got night cream, cold cream, wrinkle remover. This is here. This is clay mass, avocado mass, cucumber mass. You know, you can make a heck of a salad out of these. Well, you make fun, but a little dab of this around your eyes daily wouldn't do you a bit of harm. Me, Mr. Dorian Gray, Mr. Forever Young. Mr. Fading Glory, Mr. Crow's Feet. Where? Check them out. Get out of here. Those are character lines. Oh, honey, if you were a woman, they'd be rushing you to emergency cosmetic surgery. Will you still love me when I'm old and gray? Mm -hmm. Of course, darling. I may not be with you, but I will love you. Cold-blooded. Who could that be this hour of night? Professor Dennis. Professor Dennis. Professor Dennis. Oh. 
Professor Dennis, somebody just tried to kill me. I, mean, I was that close to getting creamed. Just, just slow down, Paul. What happened? I was at the library, going over some old news stories about Kirby's murder. And when I was on my motor scooter, riding back to the dorm, this car starts bearing down on me. Oh, my goodness. Well, could it have been a drunk driver? No, he wasn't weaving. He was aiming right at me. And if I hadn't have jumped, I'd have been history. Well, did you see the driver? Did you get a license plate number? No, all I saw was headlights. Paul, why would somebody try to kill you? Don't get mad at me, Professor Dennis, but I went to Marcus's old investment firm. You did what? Well, I just wanted to see whether he was really the guy in Kirby's appointment book. I better put a call into the lieutenant. Yeah, I agree. All right. Yeah. Bye. I'm sure it was because of those questions that I was asking about Kirby at that company. Lieutenant Akers said he would check with both them and Kirby's firm, but he's a long ways from being convinced that someone tried to kill you tonight. Thanks a heap. It will make you feel any better. I told the lieutenant that I'd save him a trip out to Wrightwood. You're going to talk to Marcus? If you give me your word, you'll stay clear of any more of this real life investigating. Promise. Shot How many times did you actually meet Kirby? Oh, once or twice. We were working on a routine transfer of one of his clients over to our firm. Did you ever do any trading with him? No. No, as I recall, he spent uh, almost our entire lunch downing martinis and telling me how he was planning to leave his wife and run off with this other woman he was seeing. So this financial scam, the one that landed you here, you weren't pulling that at the time that you two met? Not for another two years. But you were thinking about it. Is that so? Well, you needed a simple way of concealing the fact that you were using clients' money for your own inside trading. Am I right? You read my trial transcripts. So what? Well, Kirby was in charge of all the documentation for his firm, the kind of documents you phonied up for the trading scam that put you in here. My guess is you arranged the meeting with Kirby so you could pick his brain about the crime you were planning. Who knows? Maybe it was in the back of my mind. That was a long time ago. But if you think it had anything to do with his murder, you're dead wrong. Let's say Kirby became aware of your scam and threatened to expose you. Well, it's been lovely meeting you, Mr. and Mrs. Dennis. But I have a tennis reservation. As you know, it's my last day. And I have a farewell match with the warden. Have a good game. Now, a couple of you have asked me about homework for the upcoming weekend. I know many of you are going to the big game in New York, and you certainly don't want to lug along a criminology book. So, you can leave your textbooks at the dorm. Yeah. <laughs> because you'll be able to complete your assignment using a daily newspaper. Yeah. Well, it's all described right here in these handouts. Let's hear it for the home team. All right, let's go. Yeah. Hey, Paul, you go to New York, aren't you? Of course. Who are you staying with? I don't know. Well, I've got lots of offers from, you know, buddies of mine. Well, are you sure you can stand to be away from the books for a whole weekend? Oh, no, you've got to be there. Yeah. All right, all right, come on, let's go. Score one for the mix. What you come up with? Just a hole in the form of Mrs. Kirby's alibi about the size of Lake Erie. Oh, do tell. Well, you know, she was supposedly renting a beach house on the Carolina coast at the time her husband was murdered. Get this, the neighbor who placed her there the night that Kirby died was not exactly a disinterested observer. What do you mean? Well, my source says that she went on to marry this guy just ten months after her husband died. Well, that does invite healthy suspicion. What other kind is there? Maybe we ought to see if we can't track this woman down. I'm one step ahead of you, dear. We are meeting her for high tea at the Hotel Washington. And there's a dance studio right next door. So perhaps when we're done, you could brush up on your fox trot. This fox ain't trotting. I'm not going to embarrass myself in public. Chance, Dennis, you are going to dance at that dance. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm One, not. two, I'm three. I'm not going to do it. One. Are there any questions about the menu? Yes, are you serious about these prices? He's only kidding. <laughs> I wish I were. 
How's your pancreas today? I beg your pardon. Sweetbreads, that's what they are, pancreas. Most enlightening, sir. I'll come back when you've decided. This is Dennis. Yes. This is Kate. Forgive me, but if I could just see that State Department ID. Oh, certainly. This is my husband, Chance. Hello. I hope you don't mind. You can't be too careful these days. Now, what's this about John's murder? Have they finally found somebody? No, unfortunately not. We wanted to ask you some questions about your own activities at the time. Oh, I answered every question a dozen times four years ago. I was renting a beach house in South Carolina. But the only person who verified you were there the night of the murder was James Cates. The man you married less than a year later. <sighs> what are you suggesting? That James lied to protect me? You don't expect us to believe that there wasn't something going on between you and Cates. Yes, we were lovers. I won't pretend that we weren't. I rented the beach house next to his to be discreet. Then when John was murdered and James was the only proof that it couldn't have been me, I was afraid to tell the police about the relationship for the very reason that you're doubting his word now. I take it you knew that Kirby was seeing another woman. My marriage to John died long before he did. We had a tacit understanding. Nevertheless, I was devastated when he was murdered. And you still maintain that you were at the beach house when he was killed? I swear it. Do you know anything about a man named Marcus? Roland Marcus? Marcus? Yes, he was an acquaintance of John's. How long did they know one another? Well, I think they met a few months before he died. According to Marcus, they only met once or twice. Well, that's not true. I know for a fact they got together several times a week. Will you stop fidgeting? Ow! Oh, I'm sorry. Did I stick you? No, I always scream when my cuffs are punctured. Well, well, don't look down. I'm almost finished. You know, if Alyssa Cates is telling the truth, then Marcus and Kirby were in cahoots. Maybe your whiz kid was smarter than you thought. Mm. How's the tush? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Maybe I ought to take it in a tad. My tush? No, the pants. There's a lot here. I'll exercise. I'm talking about fabric. I was bald today. Well, it's not easy being the class know-it-all. Students are giving me a hard time. You can take your pants off now. Is that an invitation or am I an incurable romantic? Mm -hmm. Hello? Telephone. Hey, hello. It's me, Professor Dennis Paul. I'm sorry to bother you at home. Paul, what is it? I followed Roland Marcus when he left prison today. You did what? He went into this warehouse around an hour ago, and he hasn't come out yet. I thought that I should talk to you before I checked it out. Well, where are you now? I'm um, in a phone booth across from the building. It's 92 Commodore Street. Don't move, Paul. I'm coming right down. Professor Dennis, I didn't wait. I went upstairs and I found Marcus dead. Marcus must have had the profits from those illegal trades tucked away in that building for safekeeping. Yeah, as soon as he went to retrieve it, someone was there to take it off his hands and put a bullet in his chest. 
But if the killer followed Marcus and Paul followed Marcus, maybe the killer could have seen Paul. Oh, that's why I want that kid kept as far away as possible from this whole business. Timbuktu, if you can arrange it. You've got to admit, though, that the connection to the Kirby murder seems a lot less far-fetched now than it did when the kid made it. Again, with the Kirby connection. I got half a dozen people Marcus wiped out with his last scam, and most of them think he got off easy with two years. I start with them, and then I'll work my way back to whatever shenanigans he may have pulled four or five years ago. Excuse me, Akers. Hey, look. Don't try to get heavy with me. You don't know who you're fooling with here. You go right ahead. You roll out your big guns. I'm not backing down on this one. Ma, don't start with me. No, no way. I don't care if she's hot to trot. Oh, for God's sakes, Ma, no more blind dates. What can I say? She fights dirty. You think we can take a look at the complete file on the Kirby murder? Chance, you know I can't do that. Oh, you always do. Crime scene, suspect photos, the whole shooting match. Thank you. You're welcome. Such a price. I have seen this woman's face. Uh, that's what's her name, right? Carolyn Sutton. She's the one with whom Kirby was having the affair. You know, the one who discovered the body. <laughs> I can never remember her name. You can never forget her face. Why couldn't she have killed Kirby? Well, she was exonerated mainly by the testimony of the limo driver. Besides, she wouldn't have had time to create the break-in, ransack the house, and then commit the murder. Now, what if she hired somebody to burglarize the house, and then she came up and tenderized poor Mr. Kirby? Holy moly! That's the suit! Yes, it is. It looks so much better on you than on a dummy. I'm the dummy? $700? You spent $700 on a suit? Oh, my God, it's on sale. What? Adriana Wallace! Don't change the subject. No, 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 no. That's Carolyn Sutton. What are you talking about? I'm telling you that this is Adriana Wallace. She's on the board of the National Children's Hospital Fund. And if I'm not mistaken, they're having an auction at Arthur Dunbar's estate out near Mount Vernon today. I'm sure we can find her there. Just so we're clear, the only thing we want at that auction is information. On sale? Uh, next item is number 341, some Victoriana for the ladies. Set of antique earrings, matching necklace. Have you seen Adriana yet? No, she's probably just fashionably late. I'll start the bidding myself. $1,000. Do I hear $1,100? $1,100? I have $1,100. $1,200? $1,200 here. $1,300, $1, please. $1, These people must $1, be needed money. $1,400. Here, yes, sir. Uh, $1,500. $1, $1, Thank you, ma'am. $1,600. $1,600. What are you doing? Don't worry about it. Somebody will outbid me. I'm just driving up the price so the hospital makes more money. $1,900. $1,900 here. Do I hear $2,000? $2,000, sir. Yes. Do I hear $2,100? $2,000 once? $2,000 twice? for two thousand dollars see what i mean what are we offered for this uh, uh, unusual lamp in the uh, <laughs> rococo style um do i hear three hundred dollars three hundred dollars here four hundred please four hundred dollars four hundred here the lady in black uh, five hundred dollars five hundred dollars five hundred dollars this gentleman in the front row six hundred dollars six hundred dollars here do i hear seven hundred dollars seven hundred dollars i have a bit of seven hundred dollars do i hear eight do I hear 750? 700 once. 700 twice. Sold to the gentleman with the stunned expression for $700. What did I do wrong? Timing. Maybe there's a museum of the irretrievably ugly I can donate this thing to for a tax write-off. Can you think I'm a spendthrift? <laughs> Uh, can't tell you how much we appreciate your generosity, Mr. Dennis, Chance Dennis. This yes. is my wife, Mickey. How do you do? Arthur Dunbar. This is quite a spread you have here, Mr. Dunbar. Well, it has its quaint charms. Oh, yeah. I don't suppose you would have a spare dungeon or something around that would need a lamp. <laughs> Afraid not. Excuse us, please, yes. Mr. Dunbar. Excuse me. There's Adriana. 
I really don't see why I should have to answer any of these questions. Well, it'll save us both the bother of getting the police involved. As far as I'm concerned, Carolyn Sutton died four years ago. We don't change who we are by changing our names. It seems you've done rather well for yourself since then. I suppose I have. My health salon opened to raves in the local press. You ought to drop by sometime for a swim and a rub down. Why, thank you. I mean your wife. It's for women only. Your own health spa? You really have come a long way. If I've made something of my life, I don't intend to apologize for it. Did Kirby talk about Roland Marcus very much? Marcus? I never even heard the name before. That's odd. Right. You would think a man would be more likely to confide in his lover than a wife whom he claims no longer understands him. Is it too much to ask what all this is leading to? Kirby must have told you about the scam he and Marcus were pulling. Maybe you even benefited from them. That is ludicrous. I told you, I don't even know who this Marcus is. How does a naive young woman become a financial mogul in just four short years? Simple. I don't let anyone intimidate me. Cool as a cucumber. Sure, she wasn't stuck with this lamp. Oh, hello, Professor. I've been looking for Paul. Have you seen him? Yeah, I think he's over behind Copley Hall. Thank you. How you doing, Paul? Professor Dennis. Yeah, I had to stop by my classroom to pick up some papers. I thought I'd see how you were doing. Okay, I guess. You're not going up to New York for the big game? Football is not really my thing. Don't have anyone you can stay with, huh? Are you kidding? I've got friends at St. John's up the wazoo. No need to put on a show for me. You know, I, I knew a student like you once. Bright, enthusiastic. Every now and then had a tendency to get a bit cocky. It took him a long time to learn that uh, the really smart people aren't the ones doing all the talking. They're too busy listening. This guy seems like a real loser. Oh, I don't know. I managed to turn out all right. <laughs> you? Yeah. I also know how it hurts when the students start getting on you like they have been. Hey, I don't care what any of them think. No man is an island, Paul. It's all right to need people to want friends. Just got to learn not to come on quite as strong. You find out anything about Marcus's murder? Well. Oh. Well, nothing concrete, but we did pay a call on the former Carolyn Sutton. Well, she got married? No, let's say she just had a lifestyle transplant. And you think that she might be behind both murders? Pure conjecture right now, but I wouldn't bet against it. Wow. Well, is there anything I can do? Yes, you can stay out of trouble. Now, someone's already tried to run you down. The last thing I want is you getting in the middle of this thing. If it weren't for me, no one would have even connected these two murders. Paul, you're going to be a barracuda of a prosecutor one day. But right now, you've got to learn to temper that energy with good, sound judgment. You understand? Yes, sir. Will you at least keep me posted on the case if you find out anything else? You got it. Could you come with me, please? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Is this your first time here, madam? First time. much pressure on you, did I, ma'am? Oh, the only problem I have is all this madam stuff. Can't we talk like plain folks? Honey, you don't know how glad I am to hear you say that. <laughs> they got us walking on pins and needles around here. Adriana runs pretty tight ship, huh? Child, that woman struts around here barking orders like she was the queen of Sheba. <laughs> you have got to admire a woman who has come up in the world as fast as she has. She ain't done it by herself, Phil. 
You better believe she had help. What kind of help? We're talking sugar daddy, okay? Anybody I know? I better shut my mouth. Come on, I can keep a secret. Then you're a better woman than I am. <laughs> Come on, tell me. Who's the man who bought this business for Adriana? Arthur Dunbar. At least we know the man can afford it. You just rest here for a while. They'll be in for your herbal rat, madam. <laughs> Mickey? 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 Gone for an herbal rap of the truth about Adriana. up and around. I thought they told you to stay off your feet. Oh, thank you for your concern, but don't worry about me. What did the judge say? Got the search warrant right here. I just turned my guys loose to hit Adriana's offices in her penthouse. She almost had Mickey asphyxiated. Don't you have enough to arrest her right now? Mine, you know the legal system as well as I do, Chance. I don't want it to come back to haunt me. Well, all I know is that we must have really struck a nerve when we brought up the Marcus murder. That was my argument with the judge, but I had to go out on a very creaky limb. No, we just got to hope to find something that ties her in with his killing. It looks more and more like Paul knew what he was talking about. Either that or he was very lucky. What we still haven't proven in Paul's theory is the financial connection between Marcus Kirby and Adriana. But we might be on to the missing link. You mean Dunbar? Mickey found out that Arthur Dunbar was Adriana's secret benefactor. I think the term was sugar daddy. Oh, uh, it sure makes things interesting. Well, how so? This Dunbar guy, the millionaire, right? He used to be one of Marcus's clients. Hey, look, I'm really behind the eight ball. We'll catch up with this later. Do you think you can get your computer pal down at the State Department to check into our friend Arthur Dunbar? It's certainly worth a try. <laughs> Once I figured out the pattern of concealment, how they hid their illegal trades. Most of Marcus and Kirby's moves were traceable through their company's databases. Hope you got authorization for that. Sure did. It's amazing how much information people are willing to give you, as long as you tell them it's government business. What about Arthur Dunbar? Um, it looks like he was just a pigeon to start with. One of the clients whose money Kirby and Marcus were using for their insider trades. You say to start with? Well, about two months before Kirby was killed, Dunbar started making the same trades they were, only at a much higher grub stake. Made millions overnight. Was there any deviation in his trades and theirs? Right here. Just before Kirby died, he and Marcus made their biggest score. And apparently, Dunbar was left out. Apparently. Lieutenant Akers wanted me to tell you that he owes you an apology. Hey, it's okay. Especially when I told him that our computer check showed that Kirby, Marcus, and Dunbar were like winking, blinking, and nod. I hate to break this up, gentlemen, but if Chance doesn't get dressed, we're gonna miss that dance. Keep talking, Paul. Uh-uh. I'll get it. Hello. Ake is here. Don't you ever go home? Uh, with the kind of cultural enlightenment you can soak up in a place like this, what for? I thought you'd like to know our trip out to Adriana's digs was very fruitful. What'd you find? I'm still waiting for an absolute confirm from ballistics. But it looks like we found the gun that killed Roland Marcus in one of our hat boxes. Did you make an arrest? We will, as soon as we find her. 
But the police should have arrested her right after you called them. They needed the evidence. And now the suspect's disappeared. And what about Dunbar? Relax, Paul. The cops are on the case. You really trust them to come through? Remember what I said about knowing when to lay back? Sorry. Good night, Paul. Good night. So, how do I look? Like a million bucks. Suit damn near cost me that. You know, it's too pat, finding the gun at Adriana's house like that. Just too easy. I still don't see her as the sole mastermind of these murders. Dunbar. If anybody looks like they benefited from all that inside trading, it's Dunbar. I just hope he doesn't slip through their fingers. That's what Paul was afraid of, too. Yeah. Mickey, you don't think he's dumb enough to go out there, do you? Now, you said you gave him that whole lecture about that. Yeah, you're right. What am I thinking? How crazy could he be? <laughs> We'd better get out there. What about the dance? We'll just be a few minutes late. Chance, if this is some kind of ploy, you are not getting away with this. Oh, just relax, Twinkle Toes. scavenger hunt. You by any chance have a spare shower cap around, would you? That's not a shower cap. I caught these two sneaking around. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Dennis, this is an evening for surprises. I'm sorry, Professor Dennis. Sit down, Paul. Let the boy go, Dunbar. Much as I'd like to, I really can't do that. Arthur? Well, come in, my dear. What in the hell is going on here? You're being set up. That's what's going on. The police found the gun that killed Marcus in your apartment. That's ridiculous. My guess is Mr. Dunbar put it there, the way he put you into the relationship with John Kirby so he could find out how he was being used. What did Marcus do? Was he blackmailing you? Just how greedy are you, Mr. Dunbar? Greedy enough to murder two people and frame your lover for the crimes? I'm not going to jail for you, Arthur. I'd sooner die. That can be arranged. You're right, Mr. Dennis. You're right about everything. She is obviously lying to save herself. I've been a fool. I'm not being blamed for those murders. It was Arthur. I swear it was. Chance! Oh! I got it! Hand me the gun, darling. I'm not going to be your scapegoat. Drop the gun! Nice and easy. Had a girl. Cuff him. Chance. Chance, are you okay? No mas, no mas. You all right? Oh, you got it just in time. That guy was beginning to tick me off. You okay, Paul? Yeah. I learned something. Somebody cared enough about me to put their lives on the line. Thanks. I learned something, too. Guys with glass jaws should not throw punches. Wow. I mean, what did I tell the class about this?
do you say we try and catch the last half hour of that party? What's the point? I guess we just weren't meant to go dancing tonight. Who says? property. So is my wife. <laughs> Next on Snoops. What's the matter? No sense of adventure? <laughs> oh, not again. Why don't you guys make an appointment? Believe me when I tell you, you know more than you need to know. I got some good news and some bad news. Mr. Howden has nothing but the highest regard for the Turks. Marvelous organization. It's a nice looking duck. Wonderful. Doggy dog, huh? Don't you dare quote me. Now raise your arm, point your finger, and let's get on with it. Nobody explained it to me that way. <laughs> you won't feel a thing. JR stops Sue Ellen from exposing him. Get ready for a season of surprises, beginning with a special two-hour season premiere of Dallas. Next on...